So today, um, this presentation is on feeling safe, how to release emotional and physical toxins for optimal well-being with Amy Shire. Share. Share. Like share. Yes, and Don De Silva, De Silvia. <laughs> and Amy is an LA-based expert in mind-body healing and author of the best-selling book, How to Heal Yourself, When No One Else Can. After healing herself when doctors have given up hope, Amy now uses energy therapy techniques to help those experiencing emotional or physical challenges to heal permanently and completely. Her work has been endorsed by number one New York Times best-selling author, Bernie Siegel and Sanjeev Chopra, hopefully I said that right, professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And Dawn is a nationally recognized board certified doctor in family medicine with over 15 years experience in functional and integrative medicine. Upon entering medical school at UCLA in 2004, she knew her work would involve building a bridge between conventional mainstream medicine and an emerging model of care that integrates up-to-date science and treatments that are comprehensive and effective at finding root ca causes of disease and health. After 10 years at UCLA in 2013, she went on to open her own holistic health center, Whole Life Health MD, in West Los Angeles, California. And here she works with patients and colleagues to help them understand the connection between the nervous and immune system and the gut-brain gut connection. So here they are. Thank you, guys. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Can you hear me? Am I working? OK. So since I have the pleasure of waking everybody up, we're going to start with a nice 8 AM little wake-up call. So an important part of our immune system is our thymus gland, which is located under the breastbone, about an inch below the notch in the neck. So can everybody just find your thymus gland? And what we're going to do is tap on it. This not only will wake you up, but will also wake your immune system up. And the more woken up and balanced your immune system is, the healthier and more balanced you will feel. So this is something that I do every day, and I thought we would just start with tapping this for a few seconds to wake us all up. And now you know what to do throughout the day if you get sleepy. So thank you for the beautiful introduction. My name is Amy B. Cher. I'm author of How to Heal Yourself When No One Else Can and an energy therapist. I help people who are having difficulty healing from emotional and physical conditions. And I help them by doing something that often works when nothing else does which is turning inward. It's often the last thing that we ever think to do because it seems maybe too hard or maybe too easy. I hear both from my clients. But it's so important, no matter what you're doing to improve or protect your immune system, to look at what's going on inside your body as well. So that's what I'm here to share today. And I want to start with a question that I asked myself many years ago and that my clients come to me with now, which is, what if I've done everything to heal or feel better and nothing is working? And that was the predicament I found myself in in 2007 after I had been chronically ill with Lyme disease and every other diagnosis under the sun, pretty much. Who here is familiar with Lyme disease? So pretty much all of you. So Lyme disease is transmitted typically by the bite of a tick, certain types of ticks. And if caught early and treated early with antibiotics, it's usually taken care of. And when you have a strong immune system, it's usually taken care of. So if it's not caught early, which most of the time it's not, it's actually becoming, it, I think diagnosis is better and better now. More doctors are becoming familiar with it. If it's not caught early, it can really infiltrate the entire system, the, in, the immune system, the nervous system, your organs, glands, muscles. It kind of sneaks in and gets everywhere. And that's what happened to me. And so in 2010, when I was in my early 20s, I started having migraines and nausea and some kind of weird little things that, of course, I didn't go to the doctor for right away. And when I went, he said, oh, it's probably your hormones. Because it could have been, let's be fair, <laughs> at, at that age. Um, well, fast forward to 2007 when I was basically had been bedridden from whatever illness I had. I had brain lesions at that point. I had full-blown arthritis. I had neuropathy, nerve damage. I had um, chronic nausea. I had 
cardiac issues. It was like whatever I had took over my whole body, and I was finally diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease. And by then, I had done pretty much every treatment all over the United States that was recommended for every disease that I had been diagnosed with prior. I went to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and I went to Northwestern in Chicago, and I went to UCLA, and I went to USC, and I did all the right things, and I followed the steps, and I was still really, really sick. So I took a huge leap of faith. Then I used to say it's a huge leap of faith, and it might be a stupid one, but now I look back and it wasn't. A huge leap of faith, and I went to India for an experimental stem cell transplant, which would help to not only repair my immune system, but repair the damage that was done to my body from the Lyme disease. So I had done tons of antibiotics. I had pretty much, for as, as well as we could do, thought, you know, figured out that probably there wasn't a whole lot of bacteria left in my system. But what was I supposed to do with my 28-year-old arthritic, limping, painful body? I was on narcotic medication and nerve stabilizers and pretty much everything you could think of, and I was still not really living a normal life. Each of the treatments had helped me improve to some extent, but for my age and what I imagined and my normal life should be, I was nowhere close. So I dragged my parents across the world, bless them, and went to India for the stem cell transplant. And I was there for eight weeks, and in a matter of eight weeks, everything turned around. I was almost off all of my pain medication. I felt like life had sort of been infused into me again, and I thought, this is great. I'm gonna go home now and just get on with my life. This illness ruined enough of it. I'm just, now I'm just gonna move on. And um, I always say now, the universe was probably laughing in my face because I am the type of person who likes to take care of something, ooh, take care of something, and then move on. But life doesn't really work that way because when you have something going on in your life, you can't just fix it and move on. You have to look at it and you have to figure out what patterns are not working for you. And you have to really embrace and engage in it to truly move forward. So anyway, at that point, I had no idea about that. I went home and I decided I would just get back to my life. And that's exactly what I did. And I was well for about a year. And after a year, I started seeing symptoms come back. I started getting tingling and pain in my legs again. And I started getting allergic to every food again, all things that had pretty much gone away in India. And it was then that I was completely disgusted and broke and clueless about what to do next. And I had this very real epiphany. And the epiphany was that if treating the body alone does not cure something, then the body alone cannot be what caused it. Because I had done everything to treat my body, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of everything. And at that point, I did something that took more bravery than anything else I had done prior, even dragging my parents all the way to India for an experimental treatment when my doctor told me I might not come back. And I decided to look inward. And that, for me, was such a scary thing because I had had people say to me in the past and doctors say to me in the past um, that, you know, not that you might be part of it, but is there anything you're unhappy about in your life? How's your relationship? You know, stress can really cause a lot of problems and all of this stuff. And I was always defensive. This is not stress. This is Lyme disease. This is not me. It's not my fault. I was like, it's not my fault syndrome all the way. And at this point, I had a thought that I had never had before. And I'm a perfectionist, I'm a Virgo, so I was just like born to like do everything right or try to do everything right. And so I was very, very resistant to me having anything to do with this bacteria that just like this tick that came out of nowhere and bit me and gave me this bacteria. How could, how could I have anything to do with that? But I had this very sort of quiet voice inside of me all of a sudden say, it's probably not your fault. But if it is, who cares? Like, who are, you who are you fighting against? Like, is this even help? Like, is this even helping you? And that sort of became my mantra. It's probably not my fault, because the Virgo part of me had to hang on to that. But if it is, who cares? Who cares? Does it matter at this point? If I want to feel better, and it is part of my fault, then that's kind of good, I think, because then I could be part of the solution. And so I started 
kind of doing something different than I'd ever done before. I didn't go to any more doctors. I didn't freak out and start taking every, every treatment that I could find. I wanted to, but I didn't because I had done that before and it hadn't worked. And I decided to do a little bit of research about self-healing and about how we participate in the health of our own bodies and how our bodies are an environment for, me, for healing. And I discovered the works of Louise Hay and Bruce Lipton and um, Candace Pert, who wrote a great book called Molecules of Emotion. And I discovered that emotional, I'll call it emotional baggage, because everybody kind of you know, is familiar with that. Emotional baggage has a very, very real impact on our body, on our nervous system, on our immune system. Who here has heard about fight, flight, or freeze mode? Half of you are like, I'm in it, I know. So I get it. So, so what happens typically when we experience difficult emotion that we don't know what to do with and we can't process is we go into a state of what's called fight, flight, or freeze. To my clients in private sessions, I call this freak out mode because that's all it is. Your body is basically freaking out. Blood is not flowing to the right places in your body. You can't think straight. It's basically a panic mode for the body. And what's happening is that it's a, it's a very natural reaction when we go through, through something traumatic because the chemicals in our body surge, our blood pressure goes up. Our body is preparing to either fight, flight, or freeze our way out of whatever horrible thing is happening. The problem becomes when our body doesn't let go of the emotional trauma or the emotional baggage and our bodies stay stuck in fight, flight, or freeze all the time. Who has experienced that sort of adrenaline rush of when something really, really scary happens? And sometimes it doesn't take much, just slamming on the brakes in the car or, or just something you know, scaring you or, or even a really upsetting fight with somebody or something really shocking that happens. It doesn't have to be a huge trauma. Um, so what happens is if you do not process and release that emotion, your body gets stuck in that state day after day after day after day. And can you imagine that stress, even if it's at a lower level, being stuck in your body as you're trying to move through life, as you're trying to go to work and make sure you eat at night and do your errands. And when I explain this to people that you can get suspended in that state, I always say, now can you see why you're so freaking tired or you don't feel good? It takes so much energy for your system to stay stuck in that state. And so what I realized was that because I was always this strong, stoic, Virgo perfectionist, I was not good at looking at and processing and releasing my emotions. And as I started to look at that more and what that meant, I realized there were a lot of things that went along with that. And I grew up in a really happy family. My dad was a therapist. My mom was a stay-at-home mom for the most part. I didn't have anything that I could think of that was super traumatic. Like usually when we hear of trauma, we think of abuse or neglect or a, a, an accident or something like that. I didn't have any of those major, major events. But we all process our lives, emotions, and stress differently. And because of my unique makeup, I um, was kind of a worried kid. I didn't like to make a mistake. I didn't want to disappoint my parents who were never disappointed anyway. It's how we sort of relate to life. I always have clients say, well, I didn't have any trauma and so-and-so that I know has had so much trauma and they're not sick. Why is that? So it's basically just because we're all unique human beings. We come into this world in a certain way and we process stress in whatever way we process. A lot of it is learned, but a lot of it is just like you get what you get. As my niece says, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. You just do the best you can with it. So what I decided to do was really look at these patterns within myself of always needing to be perfect, of holding on to my emotions because I didn't want to burden anybody else with them. And I discovered through that energy therapy. Who is familiar with energy work, energy healing, energy anything? few of you. Okay. So we think our bodies are all physical, but we actually have an energy system that's, that's working with and in our body. And for those of you who are familiar with acupuncture, you'll get, you'll get this. So there are lots of sort of rivers of energy throw, flowing through our body. And they're going to different organs, glands, muscles, 
And when that energy gets blocked, a lot of times by emotion that gets stuck in the body, the energy can't flow to those organs, glands, muscles. So basically it's causing a blockage that's not allowing your body's energy system to keep you healthy. And your energy system is so tied into your physical body that, that that's interlinked with your immune system and your nervous system. And this fight, flight, or freeze response is actually also paired with an energetic response in your body. And so all of this is working together. And when your body goes into freak out mode, you have to get it out some way. And we usually have to get it out the way it got in, which is releasing the trauma or the emotional energy that is stuck there and stressing the body. How, who's resonating with this? Who feels like, oh, that kind of makes sense even though it either sounds too easy or too hard? Because that's what I get clients say, like, I've tried everything, this sounds too easy, I just have to deal with my emotions, and then I have other ones that say, this sounds way too hard, I don't know if I can deal with my emotions. But they do all these brave, incredible treatments, but emotions can be scary. So what I did was I started working with my energy system. And your energy system is essentially just a way in to pull out what's causing stress. So it's still affecting the physical body. And with my own clients and students, what's so amazing is that the energy work of releasing emotional baggage and trauma to, to help support the immune and nervous system only enhances whatever medical or natural treatments they're doing. You don't have to pick one or the other. There's a lot of people that feel like I have to either only go to a Chinese medicine doctor or only go to an MD, or I have to never take prescription medication. That's horrible. I only want to use homeopathy. And what I've learned is you get through however you get through, and eventually we don't want to rely on drugs if we don't have to, pharmaceuticals. But sometimes it hurts us to decide they're all bad and do nothing to get any relief and try to just take on that pressure of healing ourselves completely from the inside. So I just want to say that and put that out there, that it's okay to do both. It's okay to, to, to do whatever you have to do as long as you are always meeting your medicine halfway. It's really, really important that you're doing the work to help enhance whatever treatments your practitioners and doctors are helping you with. And the goal is that you can do enough work on yourself and get your body into a healing mode that you won't need so much external support. But there's no shame in needing it when you need it. I always try to tell people this because I see so many people struggling because they don't want to take a supplement and they want to do it all you know, this way or that way. And you just kind of have to embrace it all and go, everybody has their own path. So. What I did was I basically started working with my emotions and I um, started doing energy therapy techniques to release what was stuck. And some of it, as I was discovering, that was traumatizing me were little things. They, like I said, I didn't have any huge trauma that I could pinpoint, but were little things. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, nothing that terrible ever happened to me, especially with my clients, some of the things that I see that put people in fight, flight, or freeze are like something somebody said to them in second grade on the playground. Like, it's so funny to realize, like, we're so human, we're affected by, like, big things, but also really little things. And I, and I tell my clients, well, when you were in second grade, everything was huge, right? So if that got stuck in your body and you were afraid to tell somebody or you didn't have a way to process it, it makes sense that that would affect you so much. And when an experience affects us and we end up with stuck emotions like anger or fear or sadness, and we don't deal with them, our lives, we start to see our lives through those emotions. And so we start to believe things like, we're not safe, people will pick on us, we'll be hurt. And all of these beliefs also are held in the body. And so the work that I discovered that helped me heal completely and permanently and never ever relapse again was this work of just looking inward. And I thought I was so bad at it at first. It's funny to me now that I wrote a book on it and it helps thousands and thousands of people because I didn't know what I was doing. And I was so disgusted that I didn't want to keep going to more people for help. So I kind of figured it out. And it's really just the simple process of acknowledging emotions, trying to figure out what's still stuck in your body, and using simple techniques to let it go. 
So I thought that I would share some techniques with you that are super, super simple. And um, I do have a sign-in sheet on the table outside. If you want to just leave your email and first name, I'll email you the notes afterwards so that you don't have to write down any of this. I should have told you that in the beginning. Um, but, but it's all about releasing the emotions that are stuck in your body that are keeping you in fight, flight, or free so that you can relax. Putting your body into relaxation mode is probably the most important thing for healing. And it's ironic because it's the opposite of what you do when you don't feel good because you're panicked and you're trying to do, do, do everything. It's like having a chronic illness is the most unrelaxing thing in the world, right? Or having anxiety or whatever you're trying to work on to make your life better is not relaxing. So it's kind of an oxymoron that you need to be able to relax in order to heal. So it's, it's, it's really putting your body in that chill out mode instead of freak out mode. So I'm gonna share a few things with you that you can do, I'll email them to you later. And these are things that I recommend you do throughout the day just to do. And then especially if you're feeling strong emotion, because remember emotion gets stuck in the body when we don't deal with it and process it. No emotions are negative, but when they hang around too long, they start to kind of be a bummer. So the whole idea is to really use these techniques to move the energy out of the body so it doesn't keep piling up and cause, causing this freak out reaction in your body. So the first one, which you kind of already know, is tapping the thymus gland. So you tap firmly, and I usually do it for 15 to 30 seconds. This not only helps actually stimulate the immune system, but it also helps you release emotion. This is like a really good anti-anxiety remedy. So you can just tap. You just tap and you can kind of do it anywhere. And it's a good thing if you're feeling anxious, it's a good thing if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling angry, if you feel like anything stuck in your body, tapping is the way to go. It's so easy. I teach kids this and they're like, they're the ones who remember to do it all the time. Um, the next one I call, I call the panic pose. So basically, you're just going to stand with your arms crossed, or sit with your arms crossed like this, and make sure you're cupping your elbows. There are specific acupoints in the elbow, in your elbow area, that actually govern the fight, flight, or freeze response in your body from an energetic place, from an energetic standpoint. So holding these points actually calms the fight, flight, or freeze response. And if you wanna um, maybe feel or look a little silly, but like superpower this one, if you rock, that one really calms the fight, flight, or freeze. A lot of times when babies are really upset, they're in fight, flight, or freeze, and that's why rocking works, because that naturally soothes the fight, flight, or freeze response. So I tell my clients, especially for this one, just sit like this while you're watching TV. Or for people who tell me I wake up in the middle of the night with my heart racing, or I can't fall asleep, just fall asleep like this, because then you're in the most relaxed state possible. So we have tapping, whoops, we have tapping, we have this. The next one is also calming the fight, flight, or freeze response. And we're gonna start with our hands on the sides of our head, flat against our temples. Take a big deep breath in, and exhale. And on the next deep breath in, you're gonna smooth around your ears and down the sides of your neck until you're holding onto your shoulders. So go all the way down, around on the sides of your head, on the sides of your neck, and hold your shoulders. When you get there, you're gonna cross your arms and then pull, like kind of hug yourself and pull your arms down until you're holding your hands. This is a specific energy pathway that goes here that also governs the fight, fight flight, or freeze. You might recognize, because we just did the elbow, so it kind of goes through the elbow. So you should do that three times. Let's do it again, like this. Big deep breath in. Exhale. And on the next deep breath in, you smooth around the ears, down on the sides of your neck, and squeeze. And then you can take another breath. Put your hands like this, and then just kind of like squiggle and hug yourself all the way down. And I usually do that three times in a row. Does that look familiar? You know when I like kids upset? I don't want to mess up mess up this beautiful hair, but you know when you're like, you're okay, you're okay. That's what that's like such a natural thing we do. Some of this stuff you probably do some of the time in some in some way without realizing. That's also another one for tapping the thymus gland. Have you ever seen someone get upset and they're like, I don't want to hit 
my mic, but they're like doing this because it's like, oh, I'm so panicked. That's your body naturally calling you toward your thymus gland so that you can calm it and help support your immune system in times of stress so that it doesn't affect your whole body. So much of this is really intuitive. And by the way, if you don't do these perfectly, they work anyway. I work with little kids, and sometimes I see the way they're doing it, and it's working, but it's you know a few inches off in one direction or another. Your body knows your intention behind things, and if you're close enough to the tapping point or the you know whatever you're doing, you're good. And then one more that I want to share is holding the um, your forehead lightly with your fingertips. I try to rest. I see some of you already knew how to do that, like you've read my book or seen me speak. Um, you rest your palms over your temples. So what happens when we go into fight, flight, or freeze is that all the blood drains out of the front of our, basically the front of our brain. That's why it's like almost impossible to think your way out of a panic attack. Have you ever tried to do that? Like you lose all sanity that you had five minutes ago. It's because your brain doesn't work the same when you're in fight, flight, or freeze. So what this does is we're using the energetic, um, the energy of your fingertips, the energy that runs through your whole body, and sort of using it as a magnet to pull that blood and energy back up into the frontal lobe of your brain. And this one, if you hold for a few minutes, usually when you first start to do it, you'll have to hold it a little bit longer. But you, if you hold it, you'll slowly feel yourself come back into like, oh, I think I'm okay. And then you'll be able to think your way out of whatever's happening. I see a lot of you yawning, which makes me want to point out that yawning is an excellent sign that the nervous system is relaxing. It's an excellent sign that you're releasing old energy. And the thing to do with these techniques is use them regularly. At the expense of comparing my clients to puppies, I do it anyway because I talk to them about retraining your nervous system to chill out is like potty training a puppy. And I'm actually potty training a dog right now, and I'll tell you, it's very similar because if you forget to do it one time, you start back, back at square one. So what it is is that your body is used to going into freak out mode. It's used to going into fight, flight, or freeze. That may be its natural place to go if you're struggling with any um, emotional or physical challenge at this moment. So what you have to teach it to do is move away from that pattern and go into chill out. And the way that you can do that is to use these techniques consistently. But if you don't use them consistently, your body will go back to doing what my dog does and going to the bathroom wherever they want. <laughs> and your body will go back to freaking out because it's just easier, it's more familiar, and it just has probably been doing it for a long time. So the only rule with these techniques is that you have to use them because that's how they work. Um, and you can use, if you only find one of them that you like, you can use that one over and over. You don't have to use all of them, but I suggest to people that you set your phone timer for a few times a day and then just take a minute each time and do this technique and especially try to do it in the midst of feeling strong emotion. Get them out of your body so that it doesn't, doesn't um, pile up and get stuck and then you know, further, further create an issue for you. It's so, so powerful. It seems really simple that almost like, how could that help? But actually the relaxation mode in the body is the best healing mode you can get in. And I often have people that come to me and nothing's working, nothing's working, and we do a few sessions or they read the book and do it. You don't even need to see somebody for this. They do it on their own. And in sometimes just a few sessions, all of the things that they were doing with their doctor that wasn't working, it was so frustrating, start to work because the body is now working with all the great support that we now have. So, emotional toxicity, just as important to look at as physical toxins. Our, our body is a whole healing environment and we need to work on everything if we really want to get to optimal health. So, now you know four really, really great techniques. My sign-in sheet is outside. I'm happy to email you the notes so that you can just be as relaxed as possible. And um, we're gonna stay for questions after, but I would love to introduce now, I have no idea how I did time-wise, did I do okay? <laughs> okay, I would love to introduce my colleague, dear friend, and the most brilliant, I call her the best doctor in the world. I might be a tiny bit biased, but I don't think so. Brilliant, um, integrative, and functional medicine doctor. When you walk into Dr. Don De Silvia's office, you can feel that there is healing happening from the second you go in there. She is truly the most supportive, gentle, wonderful, brilliant human being, and I'm excited to 
have her speak today. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Amy. Oh my gosh, she has made my job so much easier. <laughs> Not only because of the way she's been able to help my patients in how she described, um, but um, in my own healing and my own health, her exercises have had a profound effect. So thank you so much. Um, so, um, as um, she mentioned, I'm an integrative and functional medicine doctor. I was trained and practiced at UCLA for many years and left five years ago to open my own practice in West Los Angeles where I can spend more time with my patients and really engage in a deeper dialogue about the root causes of disease and offer a wider range of treatment modalities. And I always knew that it would be part of my work uh, in medicine to help build this bridge between the type of care that we have in conventional medicine and primary care offices and the type of medicine and healing modalities that Amy is talking about. Um, what's so amazing about Amy's work, and I encourage everybody to get her book and go on her website, is she is really lifting off the page um, the science that has been there uh, for years now in the world of neurology and quantum physics about how um, our emotional states create an energetic environment in our body that makes us uh, more prone towards health or disease states. So again, this, this is very science-based medicine and techniques and and there's not a lot of people who are lifting it off the page like Amy so again it's just been a game changer for my own personal health and and my patients um, so when we were asked to speak at live aware we were very excited um, because I think that this is something that I, I talk to my patients about all the time that yes the planet is becoming more toxic and Things are um, reaching sort of what's called, you know, what I refer to as a critical mass in many ways. And, um, and I say this with all reverence and respect for the actual storms that are happening on our planet right now and the suffering that has ensued because of that. But the storms that are happening inside of people's bodies, you know, I'm, patients are coming to me younger and younger with cancer diagnosis and autoimmune diseases and our brains and our bodies are on fire and um, we really, um, the, I feel like the evolutionary pressure is on um, but this is not bad news, this is, this is a, a wake up call to us to start to live more with more awareness and, um, and greater intelligence on the planet and I really believe that where we're headed as a result of this is greater states of joy, greater states of health, and optimal wellness. So um, while it is challenging, there, um, there are a lot of things that we can do that will help us evolve and live with greater health and happiness on the planet. So when we decided to pick our topic, feeling safe, how to release emotional and physical toxins, um, we thought that that was a really important topic because as we start to become more aware, one of the first things that happens is we can feel very unsafe because there are so many threats and there are so many toxins on the planet right now. So, um, so we wanted to frame, especially the context of this weekend where there's so many great presenters and there's, you're going to be educated in more and more ways about the toxins and the things that are harming our biology or potential threats to our biology, but how do we use that again in a context of um, we have this um, innate healing mechanism inside of ourselves that really has a compass that, um, that we have an ability to detox, we have an ability to be safe in our bodies and on our planet. So again, the, the techniques that Amy outlined, you know, any time that we can get triggered, and we're sensitive beings. I mean, human, human beings are, we're a sensitive species, and I think our culture really um, does not acknowledge or value the sensitivity, and I think a lot of the, especially the childhood diseases we're seeing right now, these, you know, these are, are what I refer to as canaries in the coal mine. These are very sensitive beings that are teaching us that, wait, you know, no, we need to pay attention to these things around us. And if we do, 
we can be healthy and strong, but we can't just ignore it. So if you get triggered throughout the weekend um, or fear, feel overwhelmed or feel fearful, you know, pull out some of these techniques that Amy just uh, uh, demonstrated because they can be really helpful in getting us out of this fight, flight, or freeze response. So that's really where I start with my patients. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how I work with my patients um, and some universal um, systems um, and tools and techniques, but I also have to underscore um, the, that I do really feel that it is very important to find an integrative practitioner that you feel safe with and that you can work with because not um, everything is right for everybody. And in the world of the internet and conferences, there's so much information that is, that is fantastic that this education is starting to get out there. And I really think that um, our medical system is going to change by this grassroots level of conferences like this and information on the internet and people just becoming more aware and that starting to seep into the medical system where there is a lot of evidence you know, scientifically supporting this as well. Um, but that not everything is right for everybody and not everything is right at every time for everybody. There's a timing for physical interventions that are, that's very important. So to work with somebody, um, I'll be outside after the lecture. You're welcome to come see me at my practice or one of my team members. But to, to find somebody that can help be a guide to you on this, this physical path I think is really important. Um, so, so really where I start working with patients on a physical level is the work with that Amy's doing is, is framing, getting the mental and emotional um, body on board and framing this in a way that says, yes, this may be a, not a linear journey, and yes, I know your body is on fire right now and you're really suffering, but this is here to teach you something. It's here to help you evolve. And, um, and really getting either Amy's work or a therapist or somebody or a mindfulness practice, something that can really be the, the mind and the emotional has to be part of the physical intervention because it has such a huge impact. And again, when we're in that fight, fight, or freeze, our body can't heal. And um, somebody, um, Annie Hopper, who wrote a great book called Wired for Healing, um, said that we have a lot of drugs and medications that um, get us out of the sympathetic response, like beta blockers and antidepressants and things like that all work to calm down our sympathetic response. Um, and sometimes you need those. When you need medications, you need medications. But we don't have any drug that really activates our parasympathetics. And that's what we need to do for healing. We need not just to get out of the sympathetic response, but we need things that activate our parasympathetics. So again, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep plugging Amy's work because I just haven't seen anything really that can activate our parasympathetic and get us so effectively and efficiently into this healing state. Where, um, like she said, I have patients that I have done everything, and I'm sure a lot of you here today or listening um, when this is posted online have been in that same position where you have gone from regular doctor to integrative doctor and spent thousands of dollars, and these, these things that are working for other people just aren't working for you. And a lot of that is finding that what is tethering you to, um, to that sympathetic fight, flight, or freeze. And once we can I find that root cause of that and untether that knot, the rest of the body just starts to line up and starts to line up for healing. And we really are wired for healing. We really are. So using that as a foundation. Then I'll move to talking to patients about why, why toxins are making us so sick in the first place. And it really is the way that it's impacting our immune system. Um, and so there's, there's good news and there's challenging news here. So the good news is we have this incredibly sophisticated system called our immune system that is built to detect what is foreign and what is a potential threat to us. So it is evolved to be 
um, very vigilant about what is potentially harmful and create an immune reaction which results in inflammation to go on the attack and get this out of our body to protect us. So the challenging news is, is in the Industrial Revolution and even particularly in the last five to ten years, our, our immune system and our, our biology has just been confronted and with so many foreign different things that it has never seen before. So it's just gotten really overwhelmed. And our, our poor, poor immune systems has just been putting up the good fight. But when anything gets overworked, it gets tired. And when things get tired, it gets confused. And so it starts to turn in on ourselves. And it starts to get really sleepy. And it can't quite tell what is self and what's not self. So it starts to go back and attack ourselves. And so a lot of the autoimmune diseases that we see is a result of that. It's, 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 good, it's a good intended immune system, but it's just become overwhelmed and confused. So the good news is, is, is we can re-educate it and we can turn this around and we can calm it down. Um, but it takes, it takes education and it takes awareness and it takes things like this weekend of telling us what's confusing our immune systems. Um, the other thing that's really important, and I'll just go back and I, I want to keep weaving this through, is that remembering that our immune systems, as confused as they are, they do have an innate ability to function intelligently. So with the right interventions, we can reorganize our immune system. And really, I think that, I think that um, we are at such an incredible point in medicine and, and as a, a species right now in our evolution of really starting to understand what our bodies and our minds are capable of and healing and so I think that, that more and more this is going to be part of conventional medicine and this, this type of information is going to be accessible to more and more people. Um, so, so then I go to our guts. So how many people have heard about the gut-brain connection? So, so that's great, and that's great news because this is starting to be more and more, even in academic medicine, and you hear, and in, in, in academic literature, you hear about how um, the microbiome, the, the diversity of, of bacterial species in our gut is essential for our health. And I, I tell people that just like we need a healthy ecosystem on the planet, we need a lot of diversity for a healthy ecosystem. We need a lot of diversity in our gut for a healthy microbiome. And that is a huge foundation for our immune system. Up to 70% of our immune system resides in our gut. So if we have a low microbiome, which most people do because of the toxins that we uh, are uh, exposed to and the types of diets that we grew up with, I mean, my God, it's, it's really a miracle that I have any healthy immune system when I think about the food that I ate growing up, just having no idea, you know, no idea. And the, the types of foods that are really inflammatory to us and starting to become more aware of that. And again, there's so much about you have to eat like this or this diet is the right diet. And again, I encourage people to go about it with a, um, um, what um, some uh, meditation people say, beginner's mind, you know, childlike mind, being curious and non-fearful about just what does my body want. And again, Amy's work is great for that, you know, again, having a doctor helping you identify what your particular allergens or food sensitivities may be or given your condition what the best type of diet is. But you can start to muscle test. You can start to ask yourself what sorts of foods, and Amy has a lot of techniques in her books about how to start to be able to tune in and tap into your body's own innate information and healing wisdom. Um, so I encourage people to do that. Sometimes I, I have these visions of the future of people walking through the supermarket doing muscle testing and, and trying to find out what foods are right for them. So, um, so again, having, being able to release toxins, having a functional gut and a healthy um, immune system in our gut is vital and, and really being able to eliminate properly. You know, there's, there's um, a lot of people suffer from IBS and gut symptoms and we're just not able to eliminate toxins well. 
So that becomes, uh, you know, the, 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 the second foundation point of where I work with people physically is really fortifying their gut and getting their gut healthy and strong. And then the next part of the immune system that I address and I make sure it's functioning properly is around allergies. Um, and a lot of conventional doctors either dismiss allergies, a lot of upper respiratory tract infections that are diagnosed as, you know, ana, anti, um, given antibiotics or given antivirals in flu season really are allergies. And um, so, and, and again, this information just isn't getting out there. And, and so with a good history and a good practitioner, and just there, there's a lot of clinical signs. I'll, I'll talk to people and they say, no, I don't have any allergy symptoms at all. And it's really funny because if, if a husband and wife comes in together, the husband generally says, um, and, and um, you know, I, I don't have any allergies. And the wife is like, oh, my gosh, you are always blowing your nose. You're always congested or, or vice versa. So it's good to, to have a family member, you know, be able to, to relay and have a mirror for symptoms because people become very um, immune to what their body's messages are because we are resilient creatures by nature in a lot of ways. So, again, to be able to listen to the more subtle signs, I tell patients our bodies are always speaking to us, so um, it's so much better to listen early on because if we don't listen, the message will get louder and louder and louder until someone does get really sick with a debilitating illness. So if we can um, you know, listen to these signs early on, we can not 100% ameliorate our disease risks but greatly reduce them. So, um, so allergies are a big place that I, that I really investigate. And when I say allergies, it's not just an outright, um, I need to take Claritin every day or I can't breathe, or I have an anaphylactic reaction, I need to carry an EpiPen, or I break out in hives when I eat shellfish. It's more the, the low-grade smoldering inflammation that is a result of um, either inflammation in the gut or being exposed to both environmental things um, or foods, and it's really important to take that seriously because if the immune system is preoccupied with fighting this low-grade reactivity towards allergens, it's not available to really protect us from um, the more serious bugs. And when I talk about toxins, I also consider bugs and microbes toxins too. And so that's another area that then is very important to address. But it's not until we can, again, get our minds and our emotions on board for our healing journey, get our guts healthy and strong to be able to have a good first line of defense and be able to recognize self from non-self and be able to eliminate and detox um, efficiently and effectively um, and having our immune system really function with intelligence and not going after things that really aren't that harmful to us so that it's more available to protect us from things that it really does need to protect us from. Um, so then when those systems are addressed and starting to work more efficiently and effectively, then I can go in and start to look at what is the body burden of toxins and metals and um, it just always amazes me again how dental health is, it's, it's, it's a totally different wing of medicine. I mean, we probably, I don't even think, I think we got, we get a week of nutrition in medical school, which is shocking. Um, and I don't even know that we, I, I think the only dental education we got was in anatomy lab. I mean, we didn't really learn. And then you hear about how flossing is important for health disease and, and that. But you, you don't get um, any talk about um, root canals or mercury fillings or other things that um, can really impact your health. And when you think about it, your, your mouth is right at the beginning of your GI tract. So everything that's going on in your mouth is affecting your whole GI system. It's also at very close proximity to your brain. Um, so anything that's going on from an inflammatory standpoint um, or an infectious standpoint is going to have a huge impact on your brain. And also we have all these um, um, meridians that are affected to certain teeth. And our parasympathetic nervous system 
and, and optimal function of that is very important to have a healthy dental um, system. So looking at um, those layers of health and a phys physical um, aspects, again, are very important to be able to have um, a healthy mouth, a healthy dental system, be able to address and look at if there are toxins built up in your body and how do we discharge them. And if there are microbes um, that are affecting your health, how do we address them? And again, like Amy said, one of the things that's so amazing is that if our body is aligned for healing, if, our, if we're doing the, the mental and the emotional work um, and some, a few things to start to support our, our physical elimination, it's, it's really amazing the, the, the way that the body can just sort of line up and start to get on board with healing. And my work, again, becomes very easy in that um, there's, there's sometimes very few physical um, interventions that I need to do to treat the microbes or to start to get the body to release the, the metals or the toxins because that system is already in place of I am releasing toxins, I'm releasing toxic thoughts, I'm releasing toxic relationships. Um, and again, not just focusing on what you're releasing, but what you're replacing it with. And again, that's where Amy's work is so incredible, is that she not only talks about releasing things, but planting things. You know, what, what do we um, install? She has some exercises in her book that are just really beautiful, because once we release things, um, while space is very important for new things to come in and, and grow, and we live in a culture that is um, very absent of space, and that's, um, again, why contemplative practices are so valuable, and Amy's work is so valuable, because it really stretches that muscle inside of ourselves to allow space so that something new and good can come in and grow. Um, but then when we have that space, really planting that intention for what we want to install and what we want to grow in our bodies. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and, and open it up for questions, but I just want to end with, again, thank you all for your time and attention. And, and I, again, I'm really excited about, you know, as challenging as it is with what's going on both in our, our bodies and the planet right now, I think it's an incredible um, opportunity and an incredible time for us to really wake up and live with greater awareness that is going to help us all evolve and reach optimal health and live in happier states of health and wellness on the planet. So thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. As good, great question because so everybody that um, so first I make sure that people are you know again their gut is eliminating well they're doing things like infrared saunas you have a protocol I would highly recommend working with a practitioner um, that can put you on a protocol I put all of my patients that um, are ready to have their mercury removed on a protective protocol that, um, that when you get the mercury removed, there are things that you can take that help um, bind and excrete the mercury that gets leached and also ensures that you are eliminating properly, um, getting some clonics, doing some infrared saunas, and making sure that you go to a good biodentist. Um, if you go to my website, there's a link for, um, for biodentists. Yeah, that, that, um, that use protective measures. So you want to make sure that, so I, I, I have a lot of patients that come and they say, well, I'll just have my dentist remove them. And I say, if your dentist hasn't talked to you about the importance of removing them yet, they're not the dentist to remove them <laughs> because they just don't know about, the, you know, there are protective measures that the dentists know um, so that you're really protective in the process of getting them removed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so another great question. So, so there's um, 
There's porcelain and there's different types of, of material. Um, some dentists just use a standard hypoallergenic. There's more advanced biodentists that have, a, 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 have an array of materials. And they will actually, there's, there's testing. I think it's called the Cleveland test. Um, but there's, there's uh, um, I may be wrong with that, but Clifford, I think it's Clifford. Um, but there's different blood tests that you can test your body because even um, certain hypoallergenic dental material you specifically may be sensitive to. So um, I recommend if you, if you have a lot of immune or allergy symptoms that you may want to get more advanced testing. And some of the biodentists do that in their office and then some tests are available online for consumers just to order. They do, they do, they do. So, um, so having just having a conversation, um, having an advocate, having a, an integrative practitioner. So I, I'll um, work with my patients and my patients' families. I'll call the the internist on char on call, and I'll say, hey, you know. If they've been on antibiotics for two weeks. Do you think it's okay if we sprinkle some probiotics in their food? Um, there was this amazing article, and again, if you go to my website or sign up for my website, um, my email list, and um, this ICU doctor back east. It, um, so I do IV vitamins in my clinic all the time, and there's a lot of research about the health benefits around that. And you know, we can we can hang bags of chemo that has all these side effects, and God God bless and thank chemo because when you need it, you need it. And, um, but there's all these other things that we can do that have so many less side effects and can really help the body. And so anyhow, this ICU doctor had this terminally ill patient who he said, you know, I, I, I basically was going home that night and I thought they were going to pass the next morning. And I read this article about IV vitamin C. And so I thought, you know, can't hurt, hang the bag of IV vitamin C went home, came back the next day, her vital signs had stabilized, her white blood cells, all of, all of her you know, infections were coming down. Um, so so there, there is literature that I have to share with people. I'm not going to you know, convince an ICU doctor to hang a bag of IV vitamin C right now, but, um, but I would you know, talk to them about, you know, it really can't hurt. Can we just give them a few vitamins? And a lot of times they are on board with that. So if you have a practitioner that'd be willing to call, because, you know, unfortunately doctors can be dismissive of, of patients, and they're even dismissive of me. You know, I have a lot of doctors who, you know, will, will be dismissive, but it can't hurt, and I really propose advocating for that. Can I jump in and say one thing yeah. on that point? One thing that I found, and then this gentleman's been so patient, he keeps raising his hand. Um, one of the things that I found is really helpful because I've worked, I end up seeing patients in ICU to do the energy work sometimes just to, to help, you know, their families will call me in. The way you word things to doctors seems really, really important. So what I've suggested to family members to do, because I've done this in my own situation with friends and family, is say, I want, like, we were thinking about doing this. Does that interfere with any medications he or she is already taking? And if you ask that way, that's the same with if you usually ask, like, you know, a traditional medical doctor who, do, who isn't open to vitamins and minerals and what we need and in so many different ways. But oftentimes if you ask them in just the right way where you just want to know if it's safe or not, do you know of any interaction? they'll soften a little because I think a lot of times they're actually really afraid to get sued. But if you ask them in the right way, they'll be honest. 99% of the time when I've done that or suggested somebody does, you get a much better response. So it might just be like, well, we wanted to do this for inflammation. Do you know of any reason that would be unsafe? That, and that's, that usually mm -hmm. works. Yeah, that's so a that good might help. Yeah. So I'll answer both and then I'll let you answer yeah. both. Does that work? Yeah. So, it's hard. It's really hard because even medical studies, and when I was trying to read medical studies, they're, all, they're almost always funded by somebody who has an interest one way or another. So it's really, I found it really, really hard. I actually, as I don't know if this is a, a bad thing to suggest, but I actually ended up just going with my intuition. Does this supplement feel like it would help me? Or using muscle testing, or which is in my book. Just because you can't ever find, I don't think, a completely, completely unbiased source. Unless you find an integrative practitioner who will tell you what works for most of his or her clients. That's, I mean, that's the way that you find out. 
Um, so that's, that's my answer is that it's very hard and sometimes with, or most of the times with health, um, taking an intuitive approach to it is much more successful than logical because many of us used a logical approach. This is supposed to work. We're supposed to take this many times a day. And sometimes with clients, I'll say, you know what, I just have a feeling. Can you ask your doctor if you can take that at noon instead of 3 p.m.? And they'll come back and say, yeah, they said they didn't care. And it's like that makes their body absorb it for whatever reason. So I think it's just being a bit more intuitive instead of looking for that research always because it's hard to find. And second, the way that I got into it was after I healed myself, I realized that I had so many friends who were sick and so just knew so many people. And I never realized the massive change that working on your emotions could, could um, instigate. And so I felt like just getting that message out there in the world. And even, even something like with an autoimmune condition where it's like, well, the body's doing this and this and this. And you know, even if stress isn't, doesn't feel like a huge issue, there is a message, like Dr. DeSilvio was saying, that comes in illness. And autoimmune illness, I often find, is a person who's really hard on themselves and turns on themselves. So there's always an emotional component. Yeah. Are we done? OK. Yeah. Any other questions? We're going to stand outside. And yeah. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just, just answer the one question about where to find reliable sources of information, and that's a great question, and it's incredibly challenging because there are, there's so much information out there, and there's such a diversity of information. So again, finding a practitioner that can help guide you. The Institute of Functional Medicine has a practitioner locator um, search engine on their website. Also, Chris Kesser is an amazing practitioner that is very generous with his resources and has really good sound. And part of my work is compiling, too, on my website reliable sources of, of good information. And again, but it's just so individualized and, and it really, you can't replace having a guide for that as so well. So we'll be, we'll be outside, we have to wrap. Answer it to him though, because we're getting, sorry, we're just, we, we, I think they need the room. So we're gonna stand, we're gonna stand outside. That's great, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank you, everyone. everyone. Thank you.